I need to apologize at the beginning that the quality may not be as good as we had it before. That is because of where I am with Pastor Kunle at the moment. And Pastor Kunle is doing a good job trying to get me some light. I'm still in Nigeria. We bless the Lord how the Lord has been able to help us. We have been talking about the story of the whole Bible. That's what we've been talking about. And we are camping at the beginning. That is where we are. So let's read our scripture from the, the book of Luke. I'm, I'm going to read it from KJV for now, and then I will read other scripture later. And he said unto them, that's the Lord Jesus. He said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possessed. That is Luke chapter 12, verse 15. I'm going to come down to that in a second, and we're going to talk about it. But let's read Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Thus the heaven and the heart were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he has made, and he rested on the seventh day. You remember we've read it before, from all his work, which he has made. And God blessed the seventh day. And sanctify it because that in it he has rested from all his work, which God has created and made. You remember at the moment we are looking at the creation story and we have seen that there are two peaks of this creation story. The creation of man, the creation of the woman crowns the creation of God. God finished all his work and on the seventh day, God rested. And we said the Sabbath rest on the seventh day was actually the supreme goal of creation. And we've looked at the uniqueness of that seven day, and I'm not going to go into that again today. And we said the concept of rest is really important, and that is what we've been spending some time on. You, you understand that God could have created the whole creation in a second. You understand that? God could have created them in a day. You understand that? But in creating it in seven days, and I'm not going to go to what we have done before, God was setting a pattern. And that is what I'm going to let us see today. There was a pattern that God was setting. God intentionally created the, the universe in six days and he rested on the seventh day. And that has set for us a pattern with respect to our pattern. You know, our pattern is a weekly pattern. So we have a day, a week, a month, and a yearly pattern. And one of the things you will see that even when we get to the Old Testament, the pattern that God gave to them revolve around a seven-day week pattern. That is where we got our seven-day week pattern from. And obviously, God created the universe in such a way that even the element, the rotation of the moon around the earth, the rotation of the earth around the sun, everything also went according to that pattern. You understand that our day actually is down to the fact that this is how long it took for the, this is how long it actually took. Sorry, they just took the light, but <laughs> keep going. Now, this is actually how long it took for the moon to rotate around the sun, I mean, around the earth. And then our yearly, you know, pattern is how long it takes the earth to rotate around the sun. Entry into God's rest is about our communion with God. And that is only possible because we were created in the image of God. This is why God created man in his own image. So that the man and the woman can enter into rest, can enter into this place of relationship with God. And the plan of God, the purpose of God is for Adam and Eve, for humanity to actually rule and to reign out of the place of rest. This is very, very important. God wanted them to fulfill his, his assignment, the assignment that God has given them. You know, God gave them the assignment to multiply, to, you know, to, to subdue the earth, to, to, to till the, the ground. God appointed them for an assignment, but God want them to do this assignment out of a place of rest. And this is important. And it's the same thing. God called you to be a father. God called you to be a mother. God called you to be a man of God. God called you into a business place. God wants you to fulfill that assignment from a place of rest. No, that doesn't mean that there won't be challenges. There will be challenge. That doesn't mean that there won't be opposition. There will be opposition. There will even be sometimes ups and downs. But God wants us to rule and to reign out of the place of rest. And this is very, very important. And one of the other things we've looked at is to look at the name of God, Yahweh. And we also look at the place that God put his man and woman when they were created in the plus, first place, Eden. Yahweh is God's covenant name. And that tells us something about the place of rest. Eden means delight. Eden means 
paradise in a sense. And all those things help us to understand what this rest is all about. Now, works, which was the content of the six days, works are important. That is what God was doing in the six days. They are important, but works are not the goal of creation. Works must be undertaken with both eyes on the rest. And this is very important. Okay, we are, we are not we are not defined and we are not defined and we are not de- determined by our works. And that is why I read that place in Luke, which I'm going to read in other scripture in a bit. This is very, very important for us to understand that God, God wants us to work. Work is important. God has given you an assignment. God has placed you to do something, but you understand that the doing it's not the end in itself. There's a source. You remember when God chose the 12? The Bible said he chose them to be with him. He brought them to a place of rest so that it was from the place of rest he then sent them out. It's the same thing. We are living in a world now where we are being defined by, you know, who we, you know, what type of work does it do? Work is very, very important. But we need to understand that that is not the goal of creation. When we are working, we have to put our eyes, our attention on the rest. Praise the Lord. Work and by extension wealth is not the sum total, nor the goal, nor the end purpose of human life. So our work and by extension our wealth is not the sum total of our life. And it's not the sum total of our human life. And that is the foundational lesson that we, we, we learn about this Shabbat that God has called men into. And this is very, very important. We will only be fulfilling the assignment. We will only be fulfilling the assignment that God gave us on earth. That assignment that God gave them to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the heart, to subdue it, to have dominion. They will only fulfill that assignment as they dwell in this fellowship, as they dwell in this holy communion with God, their creator. And that's what the Bible says, that God will come in the cool of the day and God will have communion with them. And this is a lesson. This is a pattern for us also today in the name of Jesus. We as human will remain in God's rest as long as our life are under his control. Okay. And unfortunately, this is what sin does, isn't it? So I'm going to read that Luke chapter 12 that I read at the beginning, but I'm going to read it in the Amplify, and I'm also going to read it in CEB translation, Amplify. Then he, Jesus, that's Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Then he, Jesus, said unto them, and by the way, this was the story where the Lord Jesus Christ was teaching one day, and a, a man just blotted in and, 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 and just interjected and, and said, you know, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. And the Lord Jesus said, who made me? You know, he judged over you. And then the Lord Jesus said unto them, Wash out, Amplified. Wash out and guard yourself against every form of greed. Here we go. For not even when one has an overwhelming abundance does his life consist of or is derived from his possession. There's no, nothing evil about possession. There's nothing evil about war, but it can become evil. It can become, they can become a distraction. If we are doing those things as an end in themselves, or if we are doing those things to serve ourselves, or if we are doing those things out of a, a, a ground of, of, of struggling, of scheming. No, no, it's not an end in himself. And the Lord Jesus was telling this gentleman and telling the crowd around him that even when a man has an abundance, even when a man has an overflowing abundance, his life does not consist of, nor is it derived from his possession. And when you, when you read that forward, the Lord Jesus said, so shall it be for a man or a woman that is rich in this world, but his soul is poor towards God. It's not rich towards God because that is our true wealth. That is the source of all wealth. Is this rest? Is this communion? Is this fellowship that we have with God? Let's read it from the CEB version. Then Jesus said unto them, wash out, guard yourself against all kind of greed. There are ideologies today that elevate work, that elevate materialism above everything else. But the Bible says, CEB again, watch out, guard yourself against all kinds of greed. After all, one's life isn't determined by one's possession, even when someone is very wealthy. Our life, the source of our life is from our rest in God, our relationship, our communion, our fellowship, with God. We will see in future teaching that 
this special day and all it signif signified was shattered by sin. This rest, this source was shattered by sin. And we're going to see that in future teaching. Okay. And also after the fall and the fallout, the focus of the Old Testament story is actually the story of God restoring this lost rest. We're going to look a little bit deeper into this concept of rest because what you will see as you study the scripture is that this concept of rest was given to Israel, was also given to the church. So I'm going to step a little bit more into that. And also the concept of rest is also tied to the concept of relationship as we see it in marriage and the concept of covenant. I'm not going to start talking about covenant now. That would be for future. Let's look at the fact that this concept of rest was inaugurated, was established. We saw the pattern of that in the creation story. But as we move on into the story of the Old Testament, the story of the Israelites and the story of the church, you'll begin to come across this concept already. God's fourth commandment spring from the divine blessing and sanctification of this seventh day. When God said that they must recognize the seventh day. So I'm going to read it in a bit, but you need to understand that that was patterned after this creation revelation of rest. Okay. Now, when you read the Old Testament, there are two places in particular where the Sabbath day is commanded and explained. Okay. The, the, the Sabbath day, the Sabbath rest is very, very important. And it is commanded in the Old Testament. Now, there are two places where it is expressly commanded. It is spoken about in so many other places. But there are two places where it is particularly and expressly, you know, commanded and it is explained. And these were the two times that the Old Testament recorded for us the Ten Commandments. Okay. And these two passages are nearly identical by in form of description except when they come to the Sabbath day. So in these two places, one in the book of Exodus, the other one in the book of Deuteronomy, these two places actually are the places where we saw God expressly commanding and explaining the Sabbath day or the Sabbath rest. And those two places are in the context of God talking about the Ten Commandments. And when it comes to the, to, to the Sabbath rest, it actually there was a a, a, a subtle difference between this account, which I want you to say. Now, the first account is in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 8 to 11, where it's talking about the Sabbath day, the Sabbath rest, which is Shabbat, where it is commanded and explained. And the second one is in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 12 to 15. Now, I'm not going to read the corresponding part of Deuteronomy until I get to the point where they differ. But just take it from me and you can open it for yourself. That when you read these two parallel accounts, they are basically saying the same thing. Now, Deuteronomy 1 is a little bit more expanded, but you will see that they are basically saying the same thing. But let's read the Exodus bit. You know what? Let us read the Deuteronomy bit because we've read the Exodus bit before. So let's read the Deuteronomy 1 today. Deuteronomy chapter 5 from verse 12 to 15. Keep this Shabbat day to sanctify it as the Lord your God has commanded thee. Verse 13. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. We saw, talk about that. The six days, they are, they, they are identified with the labor, with the works. Verse 14. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maid servant, nor thy maid, nor thy ox, nor thy ox, nor any of thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gate, that thy servant and thy maid servant may rest as well as thou. Now we go to verse 15. Now verse 15 is where I'm going to show you the contrast between both of them. So I'm going to read Exodus chapter 8, verse 11 first. Then I will read Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15, Exodus chapter 8, verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and the earth, and it went on and on. In other words, the reason why you, God is asking, commanding his people to rest on the seventh day, he explained it here, because of creation. He said, look, remember the creation. God created in six days. God rested on the seventh day. Therefore, you also walk in six days and rest on the seventh day. But now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15. And remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and, a, and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath. Do you see the, this major difference? 
Exodus is saying that because of what God did in creation, but Deuteronomy is saying that because of what God did for you when he delivered you out of Egypt, do you say, in other words, the reason why you are entering to this race is because the Lord has wrought for you a victory. That is the point. So this was another creation. So what was going on in Exodus when God went into Egypt and God was giving all those plague and judging, when God was judging the gods of Egypt and the kings of Egypt, what God was doing then was doing another creation. And when God delivered his people from Egypt, that was another rest. And immediately God took them out of Egypt. Where did God take them to? To Sinai. So where they can meet with God. I think I'm going to stop there. I'm going to pick it up from there because there is a revelation that is locked up in this concept of Shabbat because this is the way that God wants us to live. God wants us to live our life out of this rhythm, out of this cycle of life where we are living out of the rest of God. But you have to be in that rest to be able to live out of the rest. Are you in the rest? Have you saved? Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you've not, you can enter into that rest today. All you have to do is to admit and to accept that you are a sinner. You are a rebel. You cannot save yourself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You can bow down your head, ask Jesus to come into your life as your Lord and Savior. And I will. He will. He will save you. You will become a new person inside. You will have the, 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 the life of God in you. The spirit of God will be given to you. And God will become your father, even on this side of eternity. And when this is all over, you will spend eternity with him. Because you belong to him now. You have the stamp of, 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 of his ownership upon you. Then you spend eternity with him in the new heaven and in the earth. Do it today because tomorrow may be too late.